McGregor from Senior Perspective. Uh, today we are continuing with the stories from the disappearing villages of Peters Township. Our subject today is a little hamlet of Bower Hill. It is located a mile and a half northwest of Venetia. It consisted of a post office, a store, a schoolhouse, 18 houses, and a tavern. At one time, Sandy Flack owned a hotel and a saloon and sold whiskey. This village is connected to the surrounding countryside by the McMurray Telephone Company. Okay, there was a post office there, and the, the first postmaster being John Bauer. Being there was two post offices. One assumed was dated in 1857, the other in 1870. Maybe our guests can clarify this for us. And today our guests are Albert Whitaker and um, Marie Lafferty Bateson. And welcome to the show. And uh, perhaps you can uh, give us a little bit of a comment. Do you, Albert, do you know anything about this, about the two different dates of the post office? Well, I remember uh, about the, the post office being in the old uh, butler home. It was just torn down not so long ago. Yeah. Uh, but that butler house, from the stories I was told, that it, in fact, it was like a, a hotel at one time. They called it back in the stagecoach days. And I know as a little boy, I used to go over there and get the milk for Mrs. Butler for my grandparents. But uh, there was always a big, beautiful home to me. Uh, the inside, uh, it was it's a shame that they tore it down. It was, uh, yes, I agree. Such beautiful architecture and all. But they did most of their living in, in the basement at the time. Uh, but as far as the other uh, post office is concerned, I don't know anything about that one. Mm -hmm. I heard, Marie, did you hear anything about that one? Uh, I had heard um, about it being on the Shearer property, that it was a post office there. I guess that must have been the one in 1857. I never heard of anything like that. Now, I heard the same as Bud has heard about the Butler House. The only other, uh, other building I remember that I didn't, well, let's go back a ways. My granddaddy, he had a chicken coop that had bars on the windows. And I often wondered why they had bars <laughs> to keep the chickens in. It was to keep somebody out. <laughs> well, I later found out that that had been an old jail that sat up on Bar Hill Road. And granddad, he brought that down onto that property later on. Do you remember about where it was, either of you? Up as, there on as far Bar as Hill? I remember, it would be right on the corner, like where uh, Springdale comes out now in Bar Hill. Because Granddad oh, right. just brought that down. Just brought it right down. Right the down the hill mm -hmm. there. So, and, but it was funny the chicken coop with bars. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I am just wondering if the story I heard that there was uh, maybe it was the one for 1857, right there on the Shear property, that there was a log uh, schoolhouse there at one time way back, and maybe that's when that post office was there too. I have no idea on that. I've heard my father say that the Shear place was like a hotel also for people to stay overnight while passing through to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They would tie their horses up. There used to be a shed there. But as far as the post office, I don't know. And I can remember the blacksmith shop. Yeah, that's, that's right down there in the corner. Corner there. Mm -hmm. The corner of Snyder and Bar Hill. Did that used to be all the sheer property there from their house all the way over to uh, Snyder Road? No. No? No. No, I it think It was only that. Dixon. Dixon had that Dixon. property there. Sheer property just went up to the. Almost uh, to where that stop sign is now, across from where the stop sign is there um, for McCombs. Somewhere, but I remember uh, speaking about blacksmiths. Whenever I was a boy, I remember reading about the, the mighty smithy. <laughs> and the muscular band that we had under the mighty oak tree. <laughs> and uh, when my granddad first took me up to get the horses shod, and here's Tommy Dixon comes out. I don't know, he was about five feet tall and about 90 pounds, it seemed like <laughs> And uh, But I, I got to be a friend of his later on, he let me work the bellows in there oh. and the Ford, the big old bellows, you'd pull right. them up and down, remember, blowing, he'd heat those mm -hmm. shoes up and get them red hot and then bang them on the anvil, but it always seemed so strange, there's little Tommy instead of big, <laughs> mighty oak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't go according to the, uh, 
to the poem. No, well, and, and, and I think he made me angry one time whenever the horse got busted. He took the hammer and hit the horse on the side, and I thought, mm -hmm. oh, what a way. Of course, I don't think the horse minded, but it, <laughs> it made me think, what a, he's a mean man. <laughs> so. uh, and I remember Tommy had, uh, he had a daughter or a niece or somebody from town, and he had a little grandson or something lived there for a while. You remember him? No, I don't know him. But uh, that was, it was a nice place, and, uh, and today, of course, it's still standing. In fact, uh, years later, whenever uh, Richard King Mellon, I think it was, bought that property, and uh, he changed that into, like, they had a, a bar room downstairs, a little lounge, and they had a pool hall there, and uh, he had fireworks in the... That's what I remember, remember the, the fireworks? fireworks, yeah. We yeah. always look forward to those fireworks on, uh, we didn't have to go anywhere, we just sat on our front porch yeah. and watched yeah. the fireworks. They're very nice people. And I remember my granddaddy was, uh, well he happened to be a uh, tax collector at the time. <laughs> and whenever the Mellons had a party on a weekend, if any food they had left over, they'd usually put it in a bag and they'd bring it over to granddad's place. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was always happy to get it. Uh, but the, ma the Mellons, I mean, for we always thought about the rich people. They were just regular, honest to goodness regular people. Regular people. They treated us uh -huh. real well. Mm -hmm. so, uh, before we get into too much there, I thought maybe we would start down the road a little further, like maybe the Nabling House. Okay. And uh, I don't know, do either of you remember anything about the Nabling House? I remember the Nabling. I remember the garage. Remember they had that sign for High View Place. Mm -hmm. I remember and that sign. Here we are. Uh -huh. And I think I remember going to Needling. Did Mrs. Needling bake bread at once? Boy, you're too young to remember that problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was a good cook. I think I remember going to Needling's to get bread on mm -hmm. an occasion. And uh, of course, back in those days, uh, Bar Hill Road, I can remember one thing distinctly as a kid in the summertime was the dust in your bare feet. <laughs> that road was so dry and dusty, and you just go along kicking up the dust That's of your bare feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still have fond memories of uh, all the things that uh, people don't realize today how beautiful it was back then, though we didn't have the things that we have today. But we, we appreciated the smaller we things. We had more than that you'll ever buy today. We, didn't, you couldn't uh, buy it today. we didn't need something to entertain us. We no. always found That's something. Right. right. It, uh, we always had the yeah. telephone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Mrs. Nibbling uh, was like a midwife, and she went out if someone was going to have a baby. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. My sister, we had her for my sister, older uh -huh. sister. When yes. I first came out of the country, I was born in the city, but I spent my life in the farm. I was allowed to go back to the city to go to school. <laughs> but all my vacation time was in the country. And my grandma and granddad, they are great people. But anyway, uh, it was quite a change between city life and country life. Because when we, out in the country, we didn't have no electricity. We had the oil lamps or kerosene lamps, what they called the coal oil, I think, back in I those think days. I think so. Do you remember that, Marie? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Having to clean those globes and yeah, all that. Yeah, set the wick oh, just right yeah. so it didn't carbon up the globe. Uh -huh. And then uh, when we did get gas, uh, of course, the old stove was you fed it with wood and whatnot, and that's where we used to get our bath on Saturdays in a big tub in front of that <laughs> stove. But we that's got where gas. the Saturday night baths came from. <laughs> that's where it came from. My uncle, he was older than I, two years older than me. He got to go first. Of course, I went <laughs> second in the same water. <laughs> But well, uh, sure. I mean, that was a lot of water to heat up and to carry out and everything. Well, you know? too, water was too hard to carry them days. Uh, but uh, I remember they drilled a well down, I think, near the, was it the old Phillips farm or something? There was one down there, yes. And they had used old rusty pipe to bring it up. But, uh, All the way from Phillips? Yeah. Oh. Everybody was happy to have gas. And uh, you get up in the morning, turn the gas on, and the next family got up and they turned gas on, well, your gas would get down a little bit. <laughs> the more people got up and turned the gas on, the less gas you had. And then the family next to us, a uh, family by the name of Miller's, and Mr. Miller, he had experience in the oil field or somewhere. Anyway, he got an old corn cob and hollowed it out in a little pit in the middle of it, and he opened up the gas line, 
and they put that corn cob inside that pipe on the downside. So we all had gas pressure on this side. <laughs> the people on the other side, they got gas, but they didn't have the pressure. <laughs> but that was a big improvement. <laughs> for, for you. For us, yeah, yeah. The other people, they suffered for it. Uh, but so. then, like was kidding a little while ago at the telephone line, I can still remember our first uh, telephone number, R29, I mean, the line was 29, ring 13. You have been under one loan and zing, zing, zing. Yeah, we had that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ours was a long and a short. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Of course, Granddad, being a mailman, uh, he was the source of news back in those days. Right. You get down the road, and uh, the people, they'd be out by the mailbox waiting to see what happened to <laughs> several <laughs> miles up the road because he didn't have telephones or radios. Yeah. My granddad, he was quite a joker. He, uh, well, he first started out, he had just the saddlebags, but then he got the horse and buggy. And they had the post office down in the old McConaughey store, right across the McConaughey store in Venetia. And Granddaddy would get a uh, request from people, a lady come out, his name was Simon. Si, would you mind getting me a book, spool of thread to match this piece of material? <laughs> and the next guy down the road, maybe he'd want a bag of hog feet or something. <laughs> but when we would go to the post office to get the mail, why uh, granddad had to go to McConaughey's store right. and he'd get all these incidentals and put them along with the mail. And this one time, as I say, he was a great cure. He went and got the mail and come out and he had a big one, a bunch of envelopes in his hand and went in front of the horse. We had two horses, though, Maud and Bill. And uh, he took these envelopes and he flipped them in front of the horse and he got in the buggy. We're going down the road. And we have mail here. Next stop was mail. That's Granddad. What did you do that to a horse for? Why did you flip that mail in front of him? He's well. I had to let the horse read the mail so he'd know where to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and it was true that horse could read because every place we stopped, so they had mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so. In the summertime, the people would be out there with cold drinks for you, and uh, mm -hmm. it was quite an experience. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah. But that was the way the news got around then. Right. Uh, Marie, do you remember anything about the Pelkey house, where the Pelkeys lived? I knew where they lived, but like I said, I've only been up in Bar Hill now for 48 years. No, only 48 <laughs> years. <laughs> well, the Pelkey and house, they had, change. I think there were three boys and a girl. Yeah, Rose, Rose married, the, she was a sheer lady. Right. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Shear was one. Mrs. Shear, Mrs. Shear was yeah. a Pelkey. Right, she was yeah. a Pelkey. Mm -hmm. And we built an old mud hole down behind the stable. We called it a farm. That was our swimming pool. <laughs> but uh, that was one of the places to visit in the neighborhood. And the kids there, and then uh, down over the hill was the Corbin kids. And mm. But being from the city, why, uh, another thing too, uh, my granddad, he was a great man. He always had a job for me, some farmer. Every time I come out in the <laughs> summertime, I thought he's the greatest man in the world. I never had to go looking for a job. No, I never had to go look for one. <laughs> I didn't realize that all the farmers were looking for these kids. <laughs> Put you out in the field. Well, you worked for uh, Uncle Lou and picking berries. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got five cents a quart, too. You made more than I did. I got a cent and a half for strawberries, <laughs> <laughs> three cents for raspberries. I got two cents for raspberries. Oh. Uh, we were rich people. I yeah. <laughs> thought we were. We were happy. Right. That's right. We were happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew my two brothers and myself. I mean, we were up there picking berries and that. I think I, think I worked all day one day for two dollars. <laughs> well, you're lucky to make a dollar way I worked. <laughs> Yeah, I remember Maria, Maria and her daddy was one of the greatest farmers around. Of course, he was on Fire Hill, but oh, I, I know, Maria, I used to you know, back in those days. Uh, well, the families had children for farmhands, and right. uh, Maria's daddy had two girls or three girls. Three girls, and they were just as well. Maria was the girl who drove the tractor. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought maybe now we might. Uh, we did some uh, pictures up there on Bar Hill. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe we'll do some comments as we look at the pictures and that. So mm -hmm. they will have them on the screen. And then if you see them, then you can maybe comment on them. Okay? Okay. And if you'll roll the tape.
Where's the tape? <laughs> there we come. Okay, does anybody know what, where this is? That looks like uh, the flowers behind uh, the old needling. Isn't that a flower garden there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Behind the old needling house. Yeah. Yeah, there's the old needling house. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you remember that, Marie? Oh, yeah. Did they add to mm -hmm. that, Marie? Yeah, they added that front on. They yeah. added the it front wasn't on, like yeah. When the needling house was. I remember going up those steps all the time there yeah, on the, the side. To the back. Mm hmm. And their kitchen used to be right there, and that's. Uh, we used yeah. to sit at the table there. See, remember, most of all the homes were built. Well, that's up. the Palky house. Yeah. That's uh, it's redone now. Oh that yeah, was there. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh huh. But most of the homes in those days, they had like the two rooms downstairs and the two rooms upstairs. That's the old garage up that's by the road. Uh -huh, up by the road. Was that the Pelkey's garage that's or was Pelkey. that Fife's? Well, I, I don't know who lives. Fife's live there now. No, five. Fives have their, they built their own house. They built their own house. Uh, no, that goes with that. That goes with the Pelkey house, Pelkey. yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a beautiful scene there? Yeah. yeah what do we got well, coming up here now? Well, that must be the garage there. That's the garage. Yeah. We're coming up Bar Hill Road here now. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, Some beautiful scenery there. Oh, uh -huh. I know what this is, dear. That's it. He was taking a picture across the road. Oh, the, the Crouch Farm. Went down the old Crouch Farm, yeah. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and there's yeah. the old schoolhouse. Yeah, yeah. Remember that's the bell nice. used to be up there, Marie? Oh, yeah. Remember what happened yeah. to it? Yeah. Yeah. What happened? What happened to Bill Marie? <laughs> That Simmons bought it. Yeah, that's yeah, but right. he bought the whole place though. He bought the place and for the bell, it. I think. Well, when he <laughs> sold that though, he took the bell, and I understand that June's trying to get it back. Yeah, ah, <laughs> trying to locate it. Well, they know where it's at. It's in the center of a town up where Dutch was up in north. Oh, but they won't let him. And what it. memory does it have up there? None. Right, none. Right. That old school, I remember that. I, uh, oh, that's my alma mater there. Yeah, <laughs> they had eight grades. Right. That's what mm -hmm. always got me being a city kid with one grade for each, I mean, one room for each. Of course, there was only three of, two or three of us, two, yeah. in uh, each grade. Was There's the old blacksmith us. shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, that's uh, right yeah. across the road. Mm -hmm. That's Tommy Dixon without the mighty oak tree. <laughs> they used to bring the horses up the front and he'd, he'd shoe them out front there. Mm -hmm. The bellows is right inside the right door. Right inside the right. To the right. Uh, well, that thing's still there, I think. The like bricks are still there, Marie. We looked in the other day. Mm -hmm. But that big old bellows, remember the big old leather thing? Oh, push yeah. Up down, down. That would take a lot of strength to be. Well, it wasn't in. so bad. I was yeah. a little guy. I'd jump up and hang on it and pull it <laughs> up and grab it again. Ah, there it is. Oh, Jace, here we go. Oh, yes. All right, what a school. <laughs> yes. What a difference. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Byer Hill, we're getting. We're getting on the map. Getting yeah. famous now, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's uh -huh. what happened to the old. Butler Farm. Right. Mm-hmm. There's some more pictures of the uh, school, the new yeah. school. It looks like it's got a lot of work to be done there before in oh a couple my, of weeks. Oh, that's what I, I, I don't know. A lot more too for Well, them. I can tell when it's 7 o'clock in the morning, I hear them over there. Mm -hmm. they, they, <laughs> yeah. They're not supposed to start till 7. I hear them working away, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that was a garage wall built later on in years, and I see they saved that. It's they too saved bad they couldn't have saved the house. Yeah. yeah, they took the windows out and closed it up like. Yeah, they closed yeah. the front up. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, Walt, quite a guy. He was my hero. Yeah, he was a good stuff. Yeah, he was a good water driller. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now it. there's the old McMillan place there. That's on. Uh, that's on Combs Road. Uh, McCombs Road. Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a picture of this in one of those historical books that had the siding on. And the people lived there now took the siding off to show the old uh, log construction. The log construction. Yeah, that's, that's had quite a number of families in yeah, it. Yeah, well, Corbin's lived there, too. At mm -hmm. yeah, John. Mm -hmm. John, they lived there. Jack Pelkey lived there. I had two uncles right. that lived there at different times. And that shed up along the sides. I used to use for target practice. I forget about that. What's that? That's Bob Shears. That's Is that Shears Bob Shears' place. house? Yeah. Uh huh. Now That's where all this history business is that we uh, don't really 
have any documentation of, but that's I remember his grandmother, Mrs. Shearer. Remember her, Marie? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She used to smoke oh, a pipe and I cigars once in a while. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> looked forward to somebody come in and bring her a cigar. <laughs> yeah, I know once in a while we'd go to the store, she'd ask her, please uh, bring me a cigar. <laughs> this is the Looted Farm. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so on down by our Hill Road away, the Looters, remember, Looters had those big peacocks there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the peacocks on the side of the house, the right there, that big chimney, the peacocks would get up there at night and they would roost and the big long tail come hanging right down alongside. Right. Uh -huh. I know we used to go out of our way to go down to see the peacocks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I think um, something else that uh, we, uh, well, there isn't a picture of it, but uh, wasn't there a taxi or something, Marie, you were telling me about? Uh, Henderson? Jim, uh, Jim Henderson, Henderson. You yeah. were telling me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jim Henderson. Uh, he had a couple of boys, Wade and Monk. I remember Monk. He was a tough guy, a little guy. But Jim Henderson had his taxi cab. It was an old Model T Ford, and he had it <laughs> parked it down by uh, the streetcar stop there in Finleyville. And I don't know who all he had for I don't, I don't know who he would ride around in that thing. But they, uh, Finleyville, had a taxi cab. And that was Jim Henderson. Mm -hmm. Well, that house still standing on oh, yeah. down yeah, in it. Nice Bar Hill yeah. end of, uh, you didn't get it on down Bar Hill. I thought we took a picture, thought we took of, pictures of, of that. Yeah, yeah. but I guess maybe I guess it we didn't just take. Drove by. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's an old house. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, whoever lives there now is taking a real good care. Yeah, they fixed it mm -hmm. all up. That's wonderful where they do uh, renovate these older places and that they they don't just tear them down. Right, like they do so much of it. So, uh, but. Uh, there's a lot of history in Bower Hill. Oh, there yeah. really is. I remember back when my granddad was tax collector, all the people used to come. And of course, back in those days, they didn't have the cash to pay for it, but they'd bring in maybe a calf or a couple of pigs, <laughs> or a couple of bushels of potatoes, and that's how they paid their right. taxes yeah. back in those days. And I remember some of the people of the day that who were young ladies them days, my granddaddy had a big long a lane to come down <laughs> right. to the house. Yeah, well, yeah. And Long I remember ones. some of these ladies today tell me how they was fighting in the spooky lane when they <laughs> were young. Me. That's, That's me. That's <laughs> me. That's me. Oh, I hated going down that lane. You don't know how I hated that. It was so scary going down there. Oh, those trees coming down with those branches yeah, coming yeah. down. And it, it seemed like yeah. you were never coming to the house. <laughs> yeah, long ride down there. Uh, well, I used walk. to walk. walk. I used to walk but, down there. But, you know, there. they were good, honest people. I remember my granddad, he's real happy, said that uh, they had 95% of the taxes collected. They didn't have the money, but they, they brought whatever they could to pay for the. Right. Of course, mm -hmm. the taxes were a little bit different them days. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, you know, it was a lot of money for what we were making. Oh, yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know. So. I can remember going up there with my father to pay them taxes. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was neat going in that old house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, they burnt that house too. Never. Uh, mm -hmm. There were some young people came out and they rented it and they destroyed it and the neighbors bought it and they finally burned it down and get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. But there's so many, you know, and around this part, they just tear down things instead of. Preserving, preserving them. we yeah. just don't realize what history means. I guess until it's, right. until it's passed. Until it's gone. Uh -huh. And I felt so bad to see that, that Butler place. Me go. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they was going to take it. I didn't either. I thought they were going to uh, at least keep it and to renovate it uh, or do something with it because there's so much history. Well, I heard and that uh, they're going to take the old blacksmith shop now. Is that so? Oh, I haven't heard. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was told that the other day. Oh. Uh, Herman, did you have trouble? Well, no, the, your, I guess it was before your time. I can remember hearing stories about the teacher that used to be up at that Bar Hill School. I think they had a male teacher at the time. No, we had uh, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, oh, yeah, I remember her. There. But uh -huh. this man, I think he boarded at the old McMillan place. And I guess sometimes maybe if he had a little too much sauce, he uh, <laughs> couldn't take care of class. <laughs> Uh, one of the neighbor ladies, she'd go up and put them in the woodshed and she'd look after the kids at school. <laughs> <laughs> try to do that today and see how yeah, long you have a, a job. We just try to, t yeah. try to take care of the kids uh -huh. today like they should be and you get to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, Marie, how many uh, memories do you have up there of uh, Bower Hill? 
Not too many, only since I went up there. I think it was changed then. Yeah, well, you heard your dad telling a lot of stories about, I'm sure. Well, I was just like we've talked, the blacksmith and the tax collector. And now I had an aunt that taught at Bar Hill, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Eva Hayes. Oh, when was she there? I can't answer that. But they lived down. Must have been before Mrs. Hamilton, then. It had to be. Uh, they lived down on just about road. The Glenn Patterson farm. Oh yeah. And she'd walk up there to teach. Uh huh. Marie, do you remember whenever the Phillipses, the Wheeler, they? Oh yeah. Well, they had the cows. They kept the cows in the pasture across right. from where you live now. Right. Oh yeah. Well, when I worked for the Phillipses, uh, well, you, you, I think you made fifty cents a day and two <laughs> meals, something like that. But Wheeler, he always had a horse. He'd ride up and get those cows. And, right. And take them back down. And uh, he had a, a dog, and he would walk up. The cows were usually up waiting to be taken down the oh, road. Oh, yeah. But if there was a, a cow or something down the field, that, that dog would go right down and he'd bring them right up to the fence. Yeah. And if it got nasty, he'd run along, grab them by the tail, and swing up on their back. <laughs> you wouldn't think about putting a herd of cows on the road today up there. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. They wouldn't last. No. Well, I remember yeah. one time they let me go get the, the cows, let me ride the horse with bareback. And <laughs> that horse was used to riding in a hurry. Uh-oh. <laughs> and it never had a saddle on it. I wasn't that big back then. I got on the horse, and that horse started off just like that, and I'm a yank on the <laughs> lane. I think I got my feet up behind his ears, and I'm pulled. <laughs> Fortunately, Uncle Lou, he happened to have that shed or barn up on the road above the ways, and the, the door happened to be open, so I guided the horse right in there. <laughs> I got off that horse, and I walked him back to Phillips' farm. I walked up and got the cows that night. You walked up, <laughs> yeah. Uh, great yeah. thrill. Uh, but I remember Marie whenever uh, she always, uh, what I admired about her was her driving the tractor. I never told you this, Marie. But uh oh. <laughs> you could do, do a better job than most of the men around. Of course, how many people had tractors? We had the old horses. Right. Well, yeah. I remember whenever I drove the tractor, I learned, that's where I learned how to drive. Yeah. And uh, I, I would jerk so much that I would knock my brothers off of the hay wagon all the time. They, so I thought, you get off of that tractor. You can't drive that. Thing. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I first met this young lady. I, really, I knew her brothers better. And uh, there's kids in the country where you went around to find someone to play with when you had, had time to play. And I remember your two brothers down there. Uh -huh. And the one of them, he had a horse, a good riding horse. He wanted to sell me for $10. Of course, when am I ever going to get $10 and where would I keep it? <laughs> but I thought about that all my life. I boy, I could have bought a horse for $10. $10, yeah. Well, Ernie and Lou bought, uh, what was it, um, with Charlie Kane's Model T. Oh, model, oh yes. Yeah, you should see that thing today. I mean, he's Charlie got it all Kane. spruced up and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, George wanted to buy that. Oh. Charlie said he would sell it to him for $50, but George didn't have $50. <laughs> Well, maybe we explain who Charlie Kane was. Charlie Kane was an old bachelor that lived yeah. in with the Butler family. Butler, right. And uh, he was a great guy. I remember working with Charlie one time to pay me. He had a shirt. got me a brand new shirt, big long stripes. Oh, it was it a dandy. And I used to wear it every New Year's Eve. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's how he paid me. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Well, Marie, do you have anything to add? No, I don't, Armand. About all been said. <laughs> no, I, uh -huh. well. I guess there's lots more to tell you. Just stop and think about it. But it yeah, uh, we could I, go on and on and on. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of stories. Well, I raised, I uh, had a couple of girls was raised up there in the country, and they went to the country schools, and then they went to college. When they graduated, the dean told us that those girls had a better education than most of the city kids, and because. Uh, I know my friends condemned me for raising my kids as pumpkin huskers, but my two girls thanked me that they were raised in the country. You know. Right. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with the country. Right. No, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, I want to thank you both very, very much for uh, taking your time to uh, tell us all about Bower Hill well, it's and been a pleasure. all the surrounding things. Thank and, you. Uh, so, uh, and I'm sure that everybody else will 
be wanting to see all this. And yeah, well, I hope wish they lived when we did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is Irma Grego of Senior Perspective.